Hello students, I am Ms. Renita Bento, Assistant Professor from the Department of ECE SMV ITM. Today we will be solving the DC generator problems. Let us go to the first problem. In a DC machine, if P is equal to 8, Z equal to 400, N is equal to 300 RPM and Phi is equal to 100 milliweber, calculate EG with winding lap connected and wave connected. So as I have already told you before while solving the transformer problems, the first thing that we have to do is write what data is given. So they have given you the number of poles is 8, total number of conductors is given which is 400, speed is given 300 rpm, flux is given 100 milliweber. Now you need to calculate what is the generated EMF if the winding is lap connected and wave connected. Now we already know the generated EMF EG is given by phi Z N P divided by 60 A. So the only difference while you calculate the generated EMF for lap connected and wave connected is for lap connected A will be equal to the, the number of poles whereas for wave connected a will be equal to 2. So substituting A equal to P and A equal to 2 in this main equation. Rest of the data remains the same. So first we will go through the lap connected. So substituting in the equation 1. So phi is given 100 milliweber. Don't forget to substitute milli. Z is 400 number of conductors. Next you have the speed which is 300 rpm divided by 60 into a now you can see here a is equal to p that means even if i substitute a and p will get cancelled therefore no need of substituting this you can directly calculate it you will get the answer 200 volts next let us go to the wave connected so here a will be equal to 2 substituting that so substitute as uh, you did earlier so if you do that you will get this 800 volts so this is a simple problem where all the data is given and you directly substitute let's go to the second problem the second problem a four pole generator with wave wound armature has 51 slots each having 24 conductors the flux per pole is 0 0.01 Weber at what speed must the armature rotate to give an induced EMF of 220 volt? What will be the voltage if the winding is lap connected and the armature rotates at the same speed? So first let us understand this problem and also simultaneously let, let us write the data which is given. So according to this, a 4 pole generator that means P is equal to 4. So I have written here with the wave wound armature. So wave wound armature with 51 slots. So number of slots is 51. Each having 24 conductors. So total number of conductors will be 51 slots into 24 conductors. Because each slot has 24 conductors. So 51 slots will have how many? So total number of conductors. This is how you are going to calculate. Next, flux per pole is 0.01 Weber. So I have written it here. At what speed must the armature rotate to give an induced EMF of 220 volt? So EG is given as 220 volt. So you need to calculate what will be N. So when the winding is wave connected, that means when A is equal to 2. This will be your first question. You have got another question there. Let's see what is that. So next, what will be the voltage if the winding is lap? 
so you need to find out what will be the voltage when the winding is lap and the armature rotates at the same speed so when you're calculating the second questions what you can do is the same data remains so they have said armature rotates at the same speed that means you can take this n as the value while calculating for the second question so let us go proceed to find as i told you you have to find out the speed for the first question second question you need to find out what is the generated voltage when n is equal to same as that of the first question and the winding must be lap so let us go to the first question now we already know generated emf is given by eg is equal to 5z np divided by 16a so what do you have to calculate speed so substitute all the other given data and calculate speed for the second questions what do you need to do you need to calculate what is the generated emf rest of the data remains the same that is phi remains the same z remains the same what is n n is nothing but the speed which you have cal calculated here previously in the question 1 what is p p is also given already 60 is a constant into a what is a now now since for the second question they have given you winding is lap that means a will be equal to p so substituting that you will get the generated voltage 110 volts so next let us go to the third question an 8 pole lap connected armature driven at 400 rpm is required to generate 250 volt the useful flux per pole is 0.05 weber if the armature has 150 slots calculate a suitable number of conductors per slot so let us first understand this question and simultaneously let us write the given data 8 pole lap connected armature so p is equal to 8 lap connected that means a is equal to p armature driven at 400 rpm that means n is equal to 400 so here is required to generate 250 volt that means eg is equal to 250 volt useful flux per pole is 0.05 weber that is nothing but phi next if the armature has 150 slots that means slots is equal to 150 you need to calculate what are the suitable number of conductors per slot so you have to calculate conductors per slot now let us see how we can do this so if you need to calculate what is conductors per slot how can you do this first let me go to this main equation and i'll explain you like this what is eg eg is given 250 volt phi is given what is z z is the total number of conductors remember this z is the total number of conductors okay now let me take this set if you know the total number of conductors and if you know what are the total number of slots and if you divide that that is total number of conductors divided by the total number of slots will you not get the conductors per slot so what you should do first calculate what is z that is the total number of conductors after that divide the total number of conductors with the number of slots you will get the number of conductors per slot so that is what i'm going to do here so generated voltage is given phi is given z as i've already told you z is nothing but the total number of conductors so first i have to calculate the total number of conductors 
so that further I can calculate the conductors per slot. N is already given, P is given, 60 is, 60 is a constant. What is A? According to this question, it is slab connected. That means A will be equal to P and P is equal to 8. So P and A can be cancelled. So no need of substituting. So even if you substitute, it will be cancelled. So calculating this total number of conductors is given. Now total number of conductors divided by the slot will give you the conductors per slot. I hope you have understood this. Let's go to the fourth question. A 110 volt DC shunt generator delivers a load current of 50 amps. The armature resistance is 0.2 ohm and the field circuit resistance is 55 ohm. The generator is rotating at a speed of 1800 RPM, has 6 poles, lap wound and has a total of 360 conductors. Calculate no load voltage in the armature flux per pole. So first let us understand this question and let us also write what is, what is the given data. So 110 volt DC shunt generator. So before going to this question, I suggest you to go back and study the types of DC generators first. You will understand this question better when you know what is the shunt generator. So 110 volt DC shunt generator, that means voltage V is equal to 110 volt, delivers a load current. So main current I equal to 50 amps. The armature resistance, that is RA is equal to 0.2 ohms. Field circuit resistance, RF. So field circuit resistance, now I can also write it as RSH or a shunt resistance. Why? Because this is a DC shunt generator. So field circuit resistance will always be in shunt in a DC shunt generator. So RSH or RF will be equal to 55 ohm. The generator is rotating at a speed of 1800 RPM. That means N is equal to 1800. Has 6 poles. So P is equal to 6. Lap wound. So A is equal to P is equal to 6. And total of 360 conductors. So Z is equal to 360. You need to calculate what is the no load voltage in the armature. So what is the voltage in the armature? That is nothing but the generated EMF which is EG. So you have to calculate EG. Next flux power pole that is phi. So in this question you need to calculate what is EG and then phi. So let us see how we will be doing this. Now whenever you get this type of DC uh, type of uh, generator questions, maybe a shunt generator or a series generator. So first I suggest you please draw a circuit and in the circuit draw the required parameters. Mention what parameters are given and what you have to find out. So main current this load current I is equal to 50 amps was given. Voltage 110 volts is given. RA is given that is the our major resistance and shunt resistance or field resistance is given. So this is in shunt with the armature resistance you can see here. So this is given 55 ohms. Now you need to find out. First I told you we have to find out EG. Now for a DC shunt generator you already know EEG is equal to V plus IARA. EG you have to calculate. Now V is already given. What about IA? Is IA given? IA is not given. That means you need to calculate RA is given. Now how can you calculate IA? According to the circuit, IA is equal to I plus ISH. Now IA is equal to I plus ISH. According to this question again, I is given but what about ISH? ISH is not given. That means you need to calculate. How can you calculate ISH? ISH is equal to V by RSH. Now V is also given, RSH is also given. That means you can calculate ISH. Therefore, first what I need to do is first to solve equation 3. So from the equation 3, I'll get ISH. Substitute that ISH in the equation 2. You will get IA. And substitute the IA in equation 1. You will get EG. So first question is already solved. Let me go to the second question. 
so in the second question you need to find out what is the flux so in order to find out the flux we can directly use the generated emf equation eg is equal to phi z and p divided by 60a so eg is already calculated above phi you need to calculate z was given in the question n was given in the question p was given 60 into a was also given so calculating you will get the answer for phi next let us go to the fifth question a four pole lap wound so p is equal to four lap wound 750 rpm so this is lap wound so a will be equal to p n is equal to 750 rpm has an armature resistance of 0.4 ohm so r a is equal to 0.4 ohm field resistance r f is equal to 200 ohm armature has 720 conductors so z will be equal to 720 flux per pole that is phi will be equal to 3 into 10 to the power minus 2 weber load resistance that is r l will be equal to 10 ohm you have to find out what is the terminal voltage that is v so how can you calculate v so before going to calculate v we have to first to calculate what is the generated voltage eg so eg is not given so using this equation let us first calculate eg is equal to phi z n p divided by 60 a using this equation let us first calculate what is the generated voltage and then we'll go further to calculate the terminal voltage so substituting all the data which is given we can directly find out what is the generated voltage so that is nothing but 270 volt next we have to calculate the terminal voltage now how will you calculate ia for this type of circuit now if you see here ish is not given i is also not given in the um, in question that means how are you going to calculate ia now let us see how we have gone through first if you have seen this the shunt resistance rf or rsh and the load resistance are in parallel that means i can calculate the equivalent parallel resistance so 10 into 200 divided by 10 plus 200 will give me the equivalent parallel resistance next if you see what happens this this equivalent resistance will be in series with the armature resistance now correct so yeah uh, if you don't understand let me draw the circuit here just take this as motor so here you have r a correct and this is the equivalent resistance which you already calculated just now so this is r equivalent if you take now if you see this r equivalent is in series with r a that means i can calculate a equivalent a series resistance now so r a plus r equivalent so you got another resistance now what happens you will get a circuit like this this is a motor so this is this one so this is the total equivalent resistance r total if i want uh, i'll write let me mention this as r t and this is the motor so across the motor you have the generated voltage which is e g and across the motor that is the main current will be i a correct so now can you see this is as eg equal to ia into rt that means eg is already calculated rt is calculated can you find out ia so eg is equal to let me write this eg is 
equal to armature current IA that is the nothing but the mean current IA into RT which is nothing but the total equivalent resistance. So according to this IA needs to be calculated. EG you just calculated it before. RT is already calculated here. That means IA is equal to EG by RT. So IA got, is already solved. Now, if you have to calculate this terminal voltage, now terminal voltage will be given by EMF minus the drop. So what is EMF? EMF is nothing but the generated voltage. That is nothing but 270 minus the drop. What is the ar armature drop? That is to be calculated now. Now armature drop is equal to IA into RA. So IA is calculated 27.2 into RA. This will give you the armature drop. So terminal voltage can be calculated by EMF minus the drop. So this is how you are going to get your answer. A shunt generator supplies a load of 10 kilowatt. So PL is equal to 10 kilowatt at 200 volt. That is nothing but the load voltage VL through a pair of feeders of total resistance 0 0.05 ohm. Armature resistance is 0.1 ohm. So RA is equal to 0.1 ohm. Shunt field resistance that is RF or RSH is equal to 100 ohm. Find the terminal voltage. So you have to calculate what is V and generated EMF of the generator. So you have to calculate what is V and calculate EG. Now let us see how we can calculate this. So first, EG has to be calculated. EG is equal to V plus IA RA. Now here, if you go through this equation, we can see in order to calculate this EG, we want V, we want IA, we want RA. But unfortunately, IA is not given. That means we have to calculate what is armature current IA first. Now, you already know IA is given by IA equal to I plus ISH. Now, from your problem, I is given, but this ISH is not given. That means ISH has to be calculated first before you calculate the armature current. Now, again, ISH is equal to V by RSH. Now, what about this? Now from your problem, if you go back and check, RSH is given in the problem, but V is not given. That means V needs to be calculated first. So terminal voltage is given by V equal to V plus VL plus drop in the feeders. Now, how can you calculate the drop in the feeders? Drop in the feeders is given by R into I. So R feeder into the current in the feeder. So again, R feeder is given in your problem, but the current is not given. So current has to be calculated. So how will you calculate current? Now using PL is equal to VL into I. PL is nothing but the power in the load. VL is the voltage and the current main current from the load. So using this, you can calculate what is I. So that is what I have done here. So once you calculate I, you can substitute in the equation 5 and get the drop in the feeders. Once you get the drop in the feeders, you can substitute that in the equation 4 and get what is the terminal voltage. So once terminal voltage V is found, you can substitute that in the equation 3 and get what is ISH. So once ISH is found, you can substitute that in the equation 2 and get what is armature current IA. So once IA is found, you can substitute that in the main equation EG and find out what is the final answer EG. So this is what we have done. I hope you have understood now. Next. A 4 pole 100 volt shunt generator with lap connected armature having field and armature resistance of 50 ohm 
and 0.1 ohm respectively supplies 60 100 volt 40 watt lamps calculate the total armature current the current per path and the generated emf allow a contact drop of 1 volt per brush so let us see what is given what we have to find out first let us understand this question a four pole that means p is equal to 4 100 volt that means v is equal to 100 shunt generator with lap connected when you say it is lap connected you already know a is equal to p that means a equal to p equal to 4 having field and armature resistance that means field resistance is 50 ohm armature resistance is 0.1 ohm so this is the armature resistance supplies 60 100 volt 40 watt lamps so it is connected to a load and the load has total of 60 lamps each lamp is of 100 volt and 40 watt that means what will be the total load so total load can be calculated by total of 60 lamps each lamp is of 40 watts so 60 into 40 will give you the total load that is nothing but 2400 watt so if you want to detail let me explain one lamp is of 40 watts now you have total of 60 lamps so to what will be the total power so that is how what I have done 60 into 40 will give me the total power so this is what we have done next load voltage is given as 100 volt contact drop per brush is given as 1 volt so total it will be total contact drop will be 2 into 1 which is equal to 2 volts next what do we have to find out we need to find out what is the total armature current so that is ia current per path so you already know there are a number of paths and current per path means you will have to calculate ia by a and generated emf eg so let us see how we are going to calculate this so I've already told you we have to calculate one is IA another one is current per parallel path so IA by A and then you have to calculate generated voltage that is nothing but EG so we'll see how we can do this IA is equal to I plus ISH. You already know this for a motor. IA is equal to I plus ISH. So you can see here. So I is equal to total load by VL. How can you do that? So this is IA. If, you, if it is not clear, you can see here. IA is the main current I is the current which is going through the load ISH is the current which is going through RSH now I want to calculate what is this current that is the current which is flowing through load now you already know P is equal to VI now total power in the load is already calculated which we got it as 2400 watt vl was already given in your question now if you calculate it like that that means 
P is equal to 2400 and VL was given so equal to I. So P divided by V will be giving you I. So that is what I have done here. ISH next. ISH you know already ISH is given by V by RSH. So using that I will calculate ISH. So substituting both these in the above equation I will get the current IA. So first question is found out. Next they have asked you to find out what is the current per path. So you already know you have got a number of parallel paths. So per path if you want to calculate you need to calculate IA by A. So since you have both the quantities directly you can calculate IA by A. Next you need to calculate what is EG. So EG is equal to V plus IA RA plus brush draw. So I've already told you brush drop per brush was given which was 1 volt so total brush drop will be 2 into 1 will be which is equal to 2 volts so substituting all the given quantity in the equation 2 we will get the final answer so thank you